It wasn't too long ago that the issue of giving HPV vaccines to young girls was a big deal. Now researchers say there is more evidence that the shot is worth it for boys. The new American Cancer Society also says it could save health care systems millions of dollars. Dr. For, or Dr. Christopher Lewis with St. David's Round Rock is here to fill us in. A lot of confusion about HPV, and then we're throwing this new, uh, new information into the mix. Good morning. Good morning. So, yeah, there's a big push mm -hmm. at one time by Governor Rick Perry to get girls, um, you know, vaccinated. And sure. now... Talk about boys and, and that, that side of this discussion. Sure. Well, I mean, just to kind of have some background information, HPV is a sexually transmitted disease, and it's very, very common. Uh, there are some estimations that about 80% of sexually uh, active patients are going to actually have that HPV. Now, luckily, HPV doesn't cause symptoms in everyone. A lot of people can have it and have no idea that they have HPV. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, uh, it can cause cancers. And one of the most important cancers is cervical cancers uh, in women. So we made a vaccine, and that vaccine has been showed uh, to be very helpful in preventing those cervical cancers in females. But we haven't been very good at talking about how it can affect boys as well. Mm -hmm. Now, boys can still get uh, genital uh, warts and those types of things, but we weren't all that excited about giving that vaccine uh, to boys in some uh, uh, areas and it and it kind of showed we were vaccinating maybe 38 maybe 40 percent of girls but maybe only 10 to 15 percent of boys were getting the vaccine well new studies are showing that um, different types of cancers are affecting male patients more often and more head and neck type of cancers. Mm -hmm. So uh, cancers around the tonsils, cancers at the base of the tongue are being found and those are, made, are being caused by HPV. So we're getting much more excited about saying, hey, look, this is just as important for boys as it is for girls because we want to prevent these other types of cancers. So the difference between the boys and, and the girls is just it's causing different types of cancer. Exactly. Okay. And I was reading this NBC News article that came out not too long ago, and um, it actually said 70% of all head and neck cancers are caused by HPV. Exactly. In the past, uh, it was more commonly caused by things like smoking and alcohol use, but now we're seeing a, a sharp spike in HPV causing these types of cancers. Mm -hmm. What is the recommended age for boys to get this vaccine and we were talking during the commercial break mm -hmm. how it's a hard decision for a parent uh, at such a young age to already be thinking about their children being sexually active right so it is early on and one of the reasons why we uh, recommend it early and the age is 11 and 12 for both boys and girls so there's no difference between the boys and the girls it's 11 or 12 uh, but one of the hard things to tell a parent's like hey I, I want to give you this vaccine it's sort of a, an anti-sexual disease uh, type vaccine and it's hard to think of your 11 or 12 year old is being sexually active and they're usually not mm -hmm. um, but we're preventing these problems from happening in the future and it's important to get these vaccines in early uh, because once you get HPV the vaccine doesn't work so we want to catch these kids before they become sexually active so then you can prevent those types of cancers. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing parents uh, come in or do you do you talk to parents about this and, and are they clueless? It, it's very confusing because mm -hmm. it is one of those things like, well, is it just for boys? Is it just for girls? Or is it something that helps them now? Or is it something that helps them uh, later? And, and one of the points that the, uh, the article and the new studies have shown is that instead of thinking, this, uh, thinking of this vaccine as an anti-STD uh, type vaccine, we need to start thinking of this as an anti-cancer uh, type vaccine. That's really the end goal here. So we want to prevent cancer. Mm -hmm. And the, the news article also mentions the money side of this, which we don't even have time to get into, but just the, the money that it could save on down the road for fighting oral oral cancer. Right. They were estimating, and this is just a model, somewhere between 8 and even $28 million. If you take all these boys, vaccinate them now, they don't get cancer later on. You don't have to pay for all those those procedures and, and chemotherapy and all those types of things that you have to do. All right, Doc. Thank you so much for being here with us this morning, early on your Saturday morning.